Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Av Unfiltered, where we honor God, our authentic selves, and the beautiful contrast of life. On today's episode, we have Dr. Jamila T. Davis. I am so excited to introduce to some and present back to others this beautiful woman who has a story for you. It's literally one that will blow your mind. I can't wait to bring her on a little bit later. I want to share some more of my faves with you and also my artist me spotlight. And as you all know, we always begin with my scripture for the week. So let's get into it. Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Listen, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Listen, I have so many. I have at least 50 favorite scriptures, but this one here, transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, you cannot allow the chaos of the world to permeate your heart, your mind, your spirit, or your soul. What you have to do is constantly be reminded of the things that God has said about you. Constantly be reminded that you are built for a greater purpose, that if it came to you, then you can work through it. That if you are are bogged down with issues and the woes of life, that you are already equipped inside of you with what it takes for you to get through it. I don't want you to allow anything on the outside to affect you. It may for a moment because we're human, but then I need you to understand that God's hand over your life can wipe away all of the chaos and can literally catapult you forward by how you think, by the perspective that you have, by how you are changing the languages that may come to you that negative, literally transforming and, and, and resetting yourself by renewing your mind is something that we have to do daily. We have to die to ourselves daily. We have to die to our will daily. We have to die to the things that would seek to infect our souls. I want you to understand that Romans 12, 2 is a scripture that you should carry with you, that you should recite in the morning, in the middle of the day, and before you go to bed, because we all need it. We all need to not allow the world and what the world presents to change us from from the inside out, but allow ourselves to be transformed from the outside in only with what God has said about us, not others. Amen. All right. Y'all know how I preach, child. So listen, as we get started, I want to just encourage you around grounding. So literally for me, I get in a place of starting to run, run, run forward. And then I have a lot of misses in that. It is okay to take a moment to step back, to look at things and to process so that nothing gets missed in the process of you running and moving fast. So what I do to ground myself when life starts moving fast is I sit down. I literally unplug from my phone. I am plugged from the computer. I am plugged from the children. I am plugged from my husband and everything else from the church, from the title of pastor, from the title of leader. And I sit with God in me. And I take a moment to literally just rest, literally rest. The rest is the best gift that you can give to yourself because when you rest, your mind has an opportunity to relax. Your heart has an opportunity to relax. Your body has an opportunity to just be still and get re-centered. We all need it because life will come at you fast. And before you know it, you will wake up and five years of your life has passed and you don't know what happened. That's why I take a whole lot of pictures. My husband and my kids are sick of me. I take lots of pictures because I want a, a historical view and vantage point of what I've accomplished, you know, how I've grown, how I've elevated, um, all of the missteps. I want literal proof of them so I can see how good God has been in my life. And I want to encourage you to do the same. Take a moment to center yourself, to just rest. When life is coming at you fast, sit down and unplug and unwind. It will bless you. I am telling you by experience, it will bless you in more ways than you could know.
All right, so we're back with Avs Faves. You guys know every episode I have to tell you what I'm into right now for keeping my body intact because you know I deal with thyroid issues and I've tried so many things. But listen, the brand Bougie Hippie for detoxification, their supplements have proved beneficial in my life. They work. It's not just words on a box detox and you don't feel anything, you go to the bathroom for one moment and then it's over. I'm telling you, the process continues. I really, really enjoy Bougie Hippie. I really love their products because they work. They're natural. They are uplifting. I get so energized by their supplements. I love Bougie Hippie and I want you to experience Bougie Hippie as well because it has allowed me to come down when I've overeaten during those holidays. Y'all know Thanksgiving and Christmas has passed. We find the pounds that we've tried to lose, but I'm telling you, Bougie Hippie can get you back where you want to be. Not only that, if you need a good meal replacement, I have been able to identify these organ nutrition nutritional shakes listen they are grass fed and they are protein based products vegan i love them so much they are so good especially the vanilla kind if you need a meal replacement or if you need to just get your body in order it has all of the necessary fruits and vegetables you need for a day inside of them please go try it they have strawberry and chocolate but i love the vanilla that's just me personally that's on av I take a moment to highlight a woman who is blazing it, who is running fast into purpose, because I feel like we are all on a path. And as God's artistry, we are literally being used to showcase what God has placed inside of us. And there is a woman that I want to showcase today for my Artist Me Spotlight is my sister, Erica Campbell. Listen, I love Erica so much. She started her music career in 1998 with her younger sister, Tina Campbell, as a part of the gospel music duo that we all know and love, Mary Mary. Her solo career began in 2013 and has since she has released two albums with Entertainment One Music, which both charted on the Billboard magazine charts. She won a Grammy Award for Best Gospel Album at the 57th edition of the event. Since May 2016, she has been host of Get Up Mornings with Erica Campbell with Comedian Griff, currently distributed by Reach Media, the syndication arm of Urban One. But I know the roles that she has and are most proud of those as wife and mother of her three children. She has also added First Lady to her roster of things that she has accomplished with California Worship Center out there in Los Angeles, California. So today we celebrate you, Erica. We love you so much and thank you for being Uh, who you are. Please keep continuing to run fast your race because we get so much love and light from you. It's positive. And that is a plug for her amazing song that I love as well. All right, everybody. So I'm excited for you guys to meet my girl, Dr. Jamila T. Davis. That's right. I did say doctor. She is an award-winning author, motivational speaker, educator, community activist, entrepreneur, mother, and spouse. She's been featured on hit shows Love and Hip Hop and VH1's My True Crime Story, the CBS series Pink Collar, BET Sister Circle, Black Enterprise, Forbes, The Breakfast Club with Charlemagne the God, as well as the New York Times, USA Today, and a myriad of other print, digital, and broadcast media. She is currently a community practitioner in residence at Seton Hall University, as well as founder of the VIP Online Academy, where she has helped thousands of students to receive trade and entrepreneurial skills to prepare them for the workforce. And if you know anything about Black Women Lives Matter, that's all her as well. So can we please welcome to Ava Unfiltered, Dr. Jamila Davis. Hey, girlfriend. Hey, sis. 
so good to see you. Good to see you too. You look amazing. It's been a minute, but how are you? How is everything? And what you got going on right now? Oh, oh man. I mean, I'm blessed, right? God is good. God is good. Definitely showing his favor. This is the holiday season. So, you know, with um the holiday season, I have my apparel company, which I actually just happen to be repping, right? Yes. As, um, <laughs> pretty much just getting those orders out, packing things up and just doing what I do. So I'm excited about that. And things are good. Things are good. Listen, you have accomplished so, so much and you've been very transparent in sharing your story with others. So some people know your story and some don't, but you've been able to build essentially an empire that lasts for years by doing that, by being transparent with your story. So how much of that do you attribute to manifesting or having a vision and how much of it was just hustling and doing the work? You know, I really chalk it up to purpose, right? So for those that don't know, um, in 2008, I was sentenced to serve 12 and a half years in federal prison uh, for bank fraud. And when the judge basically pronounced that sentence upon me, I wanted to die. I didn't even want to be here. And I went through a really, really, really dark time. But that's the place that I really, really got to know God, right? Yeah. See, a lot of times people talk about God and your grandmother spoke about him. And, you know, you you believe, but you're not really sure. But I had an experience that really enlightened me to his, his goodness, his grace and his mercy. And long story short, I realized that I was out of alignment. And I believe that God chastens those that he loves and he pulled me back in. So today I live life on purpose. And yeah. so anything you see attached to anything I'm doing, I realize in the end, you know, like at a drop of a dime, we can just not be here. You know, yeah. things can happen. So I want to make sure this time when I see my maker, he says job well done. Oh, my goodness, Jamila. I'm telling you, I think that. People get so lost in the things and the mistakes that they've made that they don't realize that I don't I personally don't believe in failure. I believe that everything is meant to grow you into who God is creating you to be. And so on purpose, you experienced what you did because God knew this part of your story that you were going to turn, that you were going to run towards him, that you were going to get deeper with him. And so the transition that we've seen from you um being where you were to where you are now to where you're going has been truly beautiful. And you guys, I need you to look up. I need you to follow her because the story is like one that of redemption that people don't actually get people who have received those types of sentencing literally like give up, but she used it as a way to catapult her into purpose, which is the optimal word for her. Listen, so what has been some of the challenging things and shifting gears from Jamila the hustler to Jamila the spouse mm -hmm. and the entrepreneur and the businesswoman? Like how, what is the, what are, tell us truthfully, like, was it hard to do that? Of course it's, it's, it's hard every day and you just got to stay focused. And a lot of times, like for me, I came home to nothing. I was, used to a, a lavish lifestyle. So for those that don't know my, my story, I went to prison for a $30 million bank fraud um, scheme that I was a part of. And I was custom to having money, custom to having things. So I had to come home and really rebuild all over again. And even that, that was a part of trusting God because I'm in a lane that is very, very different than anything that I did in my past. So it was like, coming home, not really having money, seeing opportunities that I could go back down the wrong road yeah. very easily, right? Mm -hmm. And then saying, mm, I don't want to do that. And, it, and it's just so funny because it was actually Yandy Smith, who's your sister as well as mine, yes. right? Um, and Precious and Latoya, they had offered me an opportunity to start working with her um, nonprofit organization. And I started doing this work. And it was like such fulfillment that I got inside and there was no money on the table at the time. It just was like, I'm in this, these spaces and places and I'm doing this work and it feels so good. Yeah. And I really went back to trusting God. I was like, yo, I want to do this. The, the money's not really there, but I just like this feeling. Yeah. So I just started doing what I loved. Right. Wow. That goes back to that purpose. Doing yeah. what I was created to do, but doing what I was love, what I love. And then the money just ended up showing up. 
and yeah. showing up in such abundance. I'm like, okay, God, I see, see you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I think is, is also so profound is that usually when people get a bid and they do that, whatever, they're like, go back to what they know what's comfortable, what had provided for you before. But you trusted God in a new way, and he added to your circle, a sister circle of people and women who saw in you maybe what you thought had been lost. And so it's the power of that bringing another woman alongside of you, pouring into her, believing in her. And also while you were trusting God, you weren't isolated. There were people Mm -hmm. that God surrounded you with and brought into your life that actually helped you to see that you were better than what you, your behaviors had portrayed before. And not only did they show you that, but you're manifesting it right now and we get to see it. You are Dr. Jamila. You're not just Jamila, our girl. Mm -hmm. You are Dr. Jamila, and you are doing that thing. So the majority of your work is centered around others, whether it's in the community, mentoring youth, advocating for social justice, which is how we met and came face to face with each other and supporting Mm -hmm. formerly incarcerated women, you know, in that transition to returning home and back into society. So how did you recognize or how do you recognize when it's time to pour back into you since you're giving so much of yourself to others because that's just how you've just been let's wired? Talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> so I have a new shirt coming out called It's Me Season, right? So Perfect. Yes, you know, I Perfect, baby. I have pouring out into a lot of people, but then also God caused us to love others as we love ourselves. Come right? on and preach so that in here. As, right? Okay, so I I know that it's time to also work on me and do things that I know that I'm called to do for myself. And it's so funny because you keep saying the word manifestation. So I got to tell you about my new course that's coming out. That's called Manifestation Now. And pretty much what I'm doing is I'm talking about what's the real principles that it takes to actually manifest. Because people say manifest, manifest. But what is that really? And right. it goes back to Christianity. It's the faith to believe the unseen. Come right? on. So before I became Dr. Jamila T. Davis, I had to see myself as Dr. Jamila T. Davis. So, so even all these things that I'm doing in the community and opportunities, manifestation starts with what I say is prayer and visualization. So it's a combination of both. And folks don't really, really, really teach that. Like we really have to spend time meditating on what we want to see. So not what we're seeing, but the state that we want to see ourselves in. And I learned that in prison because in a really dark place, I couldn't see that stuff around me. Because if I saw that all day, I would be dead. So I had to see myself on the beach, see myself living this life that I'm living now. And literally was just doing it as a coping skill to like, you know, be okay. But I realized that's the formula. So it's a combination of visualization along with prayer and then the work and it'll Come take you to the man. on. Listen, I'm not moving on because I need y'all to get <laughs> that. That is crazy. And you know how people say don't create alternate realities and blah, blah, blah. I absolutely say do it. I say see yourself wherever you want to be. See yourself there. Plant yourself there in your head. Go there every single day because that's what God gave us imagination for. And not only that. Faith without work is dead. And the work in my mind is a part of the work. So the work in my mind and the work on my true self is about thinking positive. It's about moving positively. And it's about changing the perspective and changing the, the, all of the aggregation of the foolishness that gets us depressed into alternate realities of beauty, joy, happiness, love, peace. You know what I'm saying? That is what it's all about. We have to it's do the things. things you think about. Yeah. Because the, our thoughts actually manifest into things. So if you're thinking about all the bad things of life, those bad things You'll are going to come there. back to you. That's what you're thinking about. So when you change your thoughts, and the Bible teaches us that, right? Yeah. He said to think about what we think about and think about positive things and meditate on those things. So yeah. it's those spiritual principles that actually is what ignited me and got me on fire as I started reading my word. I'm like, hold up, let me yeah. apply this thing here. And there are some and scriptures what- that will jump out at you 
and they will be specifically for you as if they were written for you as it pertains to you. You are not what you had done. You are not where you had been. You were not, you know, able to be held hostage to your past. And the moment you came out, you literally catapulted forward so much because your thinking inside met you outside. So you were able to embrace the beauty that was friends who were seeing you beyond what you had done. Embrace the beauty of what God had placed inside of your heart. And regardless of anything that we've all done, because all of us have done something that should have sent us to jail, hell, and everywhere else. So to sit up here and pretend like we, we've, we you know, oh my God, you know, she went X, Y, and Z. Baby, let me tell you, so many times we have found ourselves in situations that we would rather not talk about. If the story mm-hmm. of Aventor's life had been playing right now, and my husband has preached this on many occasions, you'll be unplugging every electronic device <laughs> possible because you're worried about what people think. I'm at the place where people should know all of your missteps. You know why? Because it lets them know that what they see in you now, you weren't always on the trajectory of being Dr. Jamila anything. The, the enemy had a plan for you and you were just uh-huh. able to snatch that plan away and replace it with the plan that God had for you, which is this where you are right now, affecting change in so many women who look like us, who've been down the same path as you, who literally need a transition, a transitional example from coming mm. out and reacclimating themselves to society. So when I look at you, I get so much joy and I get so much peace and love because the, and for people to say it's over when you've done something wrong, that's not true. Look at my girl. It, you'll never that's amount to anything. That's not true. Look at my girl. Oh, this is always going to be on my record. But I tell you, honey, God's record of you can supersede yes. any judicial system's record of you that they can come up with. Okay? God, you talking about a sponge. God is the sponge and he will absorb all of that <laughs> look I'm trying to keep myself together because I'm like literally about you to preach this thing when you see a you and when we look at a you I, I don't tell me what God can't do don't tell me about the resurgence and the re re um setting and the rejuvenation and the reestablishing of a human being that God can do the work from the inside out you're that girl you are that girl wow. I'm telling you yes. and I love you so much for it I love you so love much you for too. it. So I'm going to try to get back on task because, woo, listen, <laughs> how vital do you believe community and collaboration um, are when striving towards your goals? It's everything. So it's kingdom, right? Yeah. So it goes back to purpose. What are we here for? We're not here. God didn't just put us on earth to have a good time. That's not what we're here for. We're here for kingdom work. So yeah. collaborations and partnerships, that's what he created us to do. He created us to join forces with others. And when we do, we form Voltron. So it's Ooh. necessary. So I'm in so many places and spaces in government, right, where folks don't at the top, don't talk to the people at the bottom and stuff don't get done. So right. it's when we truly collaborate because it really takes a village to create change and community. Yeah. That's when we get things done. We need the people at the bottom. We need the people at the middle and we need the people at the top. And we all get on one accord. Then that's how change, you know, comes about in community. That's right. In concert and not in competition. And I really am so glad that, that you said talking. You can't change the trajectory of a system if you aren't aware of the system. The people at the heights or the top of the business chain have to understand what's going on at the lower level to be able to find a happy medium to work in tandem to get things accomplished. So you're right. It is everything. It, without having a community it's literally like being in isolation and you, you're in your own head and you're successful and you're doing your thing, but you have nobody to share those things with and you have nobody to like piece you up and to give you that little push to keep going. Not saying you need that all the time, mm-hmm. like you need somebody to just remind you of who you are, but you also just need somebody to just agree with you sometimes. So you'll be like, get that extra boost you need. Not that you rely upon it, but it's just beautiful to have. And it's so much better together. It's so much better 
for us to share ideas, to expose ourselves to the things that you may know that I may can glean some things from, some mm-hmm. things that I may know that you can glean right. from to get us to our next place of purpose. Listen, God loves community. It's about doing right. life together, not mm-hmm. being separate and, oh, I got this and, you know, so this is what I'm going to do. No, it's what we're going to do because what we're going to okay. do always will supersede the what I'm going to do. Listen, God had chose 12 people. He didn't need anybody, but he chose 12 Mm -hmm. people, randoms. And I'm telling you, because they weren't the smartest. (laughs) Those disciples, you know, they were a little off, but he chose them specifically and strategically so that he could pour himself into them and they could walk with him about the earth to give people hope. Because he wasn't walking around with kings and queens all regaled and crowns and all adorned and everything. People, they'd be like, I can't, I can't, I can't relate to that. Like, there's right. nothing for me to to listen to this man for because he's walking around with the, he walked around with people who look like you and me, who made the same mm-hmm. mistakes as you and me. He walked around with those who just were what you call regular. And I'm not calling people regular. I'm just saying without any title. So when you were but, Jamila without what, doctor, yes, mm-hmm. doctor just enhanced you. You were already mm-hmm. her and you're her without the title you were doctor when you were incarcerated it just needed Mm -hmm. for people your mind to catch up with that and people to catch up with it that's right so i just want to interject right there so it's all really about faith right and at like i said i spent a lot of time away in that time i really got close to god and i started understanding why when jesus went to certain places certain people got healed and others didn't and it was about that faith right so the what do you believe in, what do you believe yes. yes period so even in manifestation in life and everything that we need to do people need to have faith and that's why god uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things Ooh. he uses ordinary people because he wants us to know anybody can get it. We don't, you don't need to be super spectacular. You don't need to be this or that. God can use anybody. And he often uses regular degular people so he yep. can show folks how extraordinary he is. So yes. I love that. And I love the fact that he chose someone like me, a regular person, a person that folks gave up on, mm-hmm. didn't believe in, counted out. Yeah. Girl, it just, the list goes on and on, but he sh- he's showing people, you know, my hands are upon her. She's mine, Ooh, right? And that's what he does for us when we accept him, when we embrace him, and yes. when we really have the faith to believe. So I love this podcast. I love you. I love what you're doing because you're increasing the faith of the people and you're making regular p- people believe that they can. That's true. That's true. It doesn't matter your pedigree. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter how you grew up. God has a story and a purpose for you that is beyond how you grew up, what you've done, where you've been, where you've not been. Every single thing about you specifically, literally inside of you was crafted for a greater purpose. And so I just want everybody to get it. Look at my sister. I don't want any excuses. I'm like, look at her. Look at her. Follow her and understand that she started out one way and the way God saw her, she had to catch up to. So I want you to understand that wherever you are right now, be encouraged because God can shift everything everything in a moment. He might sit you down. He might chastise you. He might, you know, get you in order, whoop your butt in front of people. (laughs) You might get blogged about, you might get gossiped about, who cares? It's just by God's grace that everybody's stuff isn't exposed. So be grateful and understand that everything that you have walked through was for a greater purpose beyond you. So sis, as we wrap this interview, please tell us what you're looking forward to in 2023, personally and professionally, and how we can stay connected to you because your story is that profound and and, pos- and literally you're showing people that the impossibilities that you thought um, were there and tagged to your name, you smashed them down and showed us that not things that are not impossible, that it's I'm possible. Yes, that is right. So th- that's it. I said again before, it's me season, right? So one of the things that I'm grateful to finally get disconnected from is probation. 
So in I, I was in the federal system. So federal system, you is no such thing as parole. So you have what's called probation. And I've been on probation since for the last five years. And the judge just officially signed the order that says that I'm finally free from the people. So let's celebrate that. Yes. Right? Come on, free <laughs> from the people. That has yes, multiple free meanings. From the that's free a whole from the other people, baby. That's another show. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> So I'm stepping into 2023 expecting, expecting God's best, knowing who I am and knowing whose I am and really, really using the tools of manifestation to just create this life that I want. Right. And it's just a life of abundance because I believe that God created us to be vessels that you know, are supposed to be wealthy, healthy, prosperous, right? Because yeah. if we're prosperous, that's how we spread that prosperity to his people. So I'm looking to walk into great things. Um, as you said, I have my significant other now. We just actually recently just bought a house in Houston. So I'm between New Jersey and yes. Houston. So I got that Come going on, on now. Houston, you know, that's still my home too. Still have a home there. I love Houston. I love the food, baby. Houston is amazing. I love it. Well, you My gotta daughter, because was... I don't know anything about Houston yet, uh, oh, but I love it. I'm gonna sing you weather. every restaurant, every spot, uh, every little hole in the wall. I'm gonna, I'm gonna text it to you as soon as we're off of here, and I'm going I with you wait. when I'm in town, cause oh, baby, I, I love wait. Houston. <laughs> and a few wait. of my episodes back, I told them that one of my favorite restaurants in the world is Steak Forty Eight. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but once no, you go I there, haven't. you won't want to put another That's steak it? in your mouth. That's oh, it. Oh, honey, Steak Forty Eight put that on the on the menu of my choice. So I'm yes. definitely gonna be going to do that. So I'm back and forth, like I said, from New Jersey to Houston. Also, now I'm working on like just really, really accepting my calling. I, I, I run away from it, but I know that I'm called to teach. You we know, I'm struggle. called to really preach. Preach, yes, teach. Yes, you know? yes. Uh, and preaching and doesn't I'm always just, mean in a church. I think that people kind of get right. that mistake. Like you can preach with your life. And you've already Correct. been a preacher. That's the thing. Uh, You're preaching to people by how you live how you exist. Yes. And so when I tell yes. you, you are already a pastor of incarcerated <laughs> women. You are a pastor yes. of overcoming. You are a pastor of deliverance and of breakthrough and of manifesting your own miracles, signs and wonders. So baby, you are already doing that. I don't uh, care. You are so when doing I say it. Preaching, I mean more so like just teaching people about principles like Really, because it's spiritual principles that's really the key to everything. It it's is. all the nuggets. Like how it's people life. don't really understand that the gems are in the book. The good book has all the gems. Yeah. So really explaining to people how you can make that practical and how you apply it to your life. And you can become successful from those things. So I'm committed to that. I'm committed to more stuff with our students, more stuff with Black Women's Lives Matter. I really want to create a museum for women, Black women in Houston. So that's one of the things that's on my radar. Let's do it because they need it. They need it, sis. sis. We definitely need to talk offline. I'm so happy to see you. I love this work that you're doing. I love how you are motivating and stimulating people. You know, God has had you on my heart for a while. So it's good to see you through this opportunity. And I'm just yeah. looking for us to just allow God to use us for whatever things that he needs. And just that to your audience, let him yeah. use you. Stop yeah. running away from your calling. Stop You're running right. away from who he created you to be. And the last thing I want to tell people, follow your heart. Follow yeah. purpose. Stop trying to be what somebody else is. Stop trying to do what mama them said and papa them said. What did God give you? What's in your heart? Right? So this is me season. We leveling up. We manifesting what the life of our dreams and the things that we want to live. And we know with God, nothing is impossible. So there's no barriers in our way except ourselves. So it's time to get it. Listen, apply that pressure, sis. What you said, <laughs> apply that yes, pressure. Remember, apply the pressure. <laughs> pressure. Yes. Listen, there's <laughs> nothing more to say. I hope you guys have enjoyed the beautiful Dr. Jamila Davis. Listen, you can follow her on Instagram, all of her platforms. She's incredible. I love her so much, and I pray that you have enjoyed her today. This conversation has blessed me more than you guys know, so I pray that it's done the same for you. God bless.
All right, so now it's time for my Av's Advice segment with Dear Av, where I get an opportunity to hear from you guys and give my input on something that you may be walking through. So here goes. Dear Av, my mother was absent for most of my childhood. Drugs, streets, go figure. I'm an adult now, educated, successful, with a family, and she has been on the straight and narrow path for several years now. She wants to be a part of our lives. I realize she has now gotten her life together, and I am a believer in redemption. I'm also a believer in forgiveness, but I don't even know her. I am unsure of how to move forward. How do I share my mother with my kids if I don't even know her? She is a stranger to me. I want to trust her, but I have no basis to even begin again. I do not know her. Please let me know what you feel my next steps could be. And thank you for helping me with this. Wow, that's a big one. Listen, sis, um, the way life is set up, it never really goes the way we think or the way we planned. Um, if your mother hasn't been in your life for a while and you have forgiven her for being an absentee mom, I think you should spend some time with her first before introducing her to your family. I know she wants to redeem the time and that's beautiful and it's noble, but I think respectfully she would understand if you would be like, hey mom, I love you. I'm excited for this season that we are embarking upon, but I would like to actually get to know you first. Hopefully she's open and um, that's amenable to her, that you're not pushing her off and you're not dismissing that her efforts to try to regain uh, some semblance of a relationship with you and also now your your family who she does not know. I would say to, you know, to pray and to also um, reach out to her and see if you guys could spend you know, some weeks and some months together. And once you get to a place where you are comfortable with introducing her to your children or in any whatever other family members that she may not have had the opportunity to spend time with or get to know, then you go ahead and move forward uh, with that way. But also forgive yourself for not being ready right now. There is a scripture that says to honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. Uh, that's one of our Ten Commandments. It does not mean or state with stipulations or contingencies. It does not say to honor your present mother or to honor your good mother or to honor your, you know, amazingly understanding mother and father. It doesn't matter what they've done or who they've been, it says to honor them. And I know that's so hard for some of us because everybody's story doesn't look the same. Everybody's story is not the same, but you honor her by forgiving her and also asking her to participate in a way that is beneficial and uh, at gives you peace in how to move forward. So that's what I would say to that. I think it's beautiful that she's been on the straight and narrow. I think it's beautiful that, you know, she wants to be a part of your life and not just let that, you know, part just be lost since she had not been in the loop during your childhood. But it's also um, up to you to decide and define how that looks and in its timing. So I pray that that has blessed you and it actually gave you a little bit of insight. And that's my answer. So God bless you. And I hope to hear more about how that has been going. So guys, if I've given you advice and you've written in, um, let me know how my advice has helped you or not helped you. I'm fine either way, but I'm excited about it because it's literally something that gives me joy to just kind of give my input if you need my advice. So that's been another episode of Av Unfiltered. Real convos, no filters. Thank you so much for joining me, listening. Um, I would love for you to like, share, and follow. Share this episode with someone else. Um, please, 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 if you have a question or need advice, if you just want to talk to me, hit me up at Av Unfiltered. It's A-V-E, don't leave out the E, unfiltered, at aventergrayco.com. That's been another episode of Av Unfiltered, and I can't wait to see you next time. God bless. Thank you.